Time to bring it on. Let's do it. You ready for that? Yeah. Okay, this first one, Pat, comes from Carlos, who says, Dear Pat, North Korea has really been in the 700 Club news lately. Do you think terrorists will use one of their nukes on Israel? Wasn't the Clinton administration responsible for allowing the nuclear technology to be released to them in the first place, even though the CIA and others protested because of the risk they would use it for nukes? The State Department claimed it was worth the risk. Oh, well, you're confusing two things, I think. Uh, one, North Korea, and the other, uh, Iran. Uh, North Korea, I don't think, has the intention of bombing Israel. It's too far away. Uh, but they do have an intention of bombing our troops in uh, the Korean Peninsula or in Japan or in Europe. There is no question they're a rogue regime, and they're going to use that as blackmail. On the other hand, the Iranians have... They believe in the Mahdi. They believe in chaos before the Mahdi comes over. And they want to create that chaos. And the chaos will involve the destruction, total destruction of Israel. So they've made it clear what they want to do when they get a nuke. All right? Okay, this is Lucy who says sugar is listed as grams on labels instead of teaspoons or tablespoons. So how does that translate? How do we make sure we aren't having too much? Uh, well, you, you have to figure out uh, how many grams are in a, a teaspoon, but I, I just would just tell you, limit your sugar. I mean, there's sugar in everything. And we've got a guest coming in a couple of days who's a doctor talking about, you know, your brain on grains and so on. Uh, he's talking about all the things that cr create chaos in our brains and in our gut. And I think it's very important to understand the role of sugar. Sugar is a killer. And so it's in cereals. You see sugar pops and sugar frosted flakes and all that stuff. It's loaded with sugar. You've also got high fructose corn syrup. You've got various other kinds of sugar. You've got syrup. You've got honey. You've got all these things. They're all sugar. And uh, so uh, I just think the big thing is to cut down on all of it. Well, then on top of that, there are so many foods that turn to sugar. You oh, know, absolutely. The carbs and the, sure, yeah. all, all the uh, all the, the uh, simple carbohydrates uh, turn into uh, turn into sugar. Yeah. Okay. This is Curtis Pat who says I was watching the 700 Club and Pat was asked whether we should base base our tithe on gross income or net after taxes. Pat replied that we should tithe on the net since the withholdings belong to the government. The Bible teaches we're to tithe on the first fruits of our labor, which <laughs> means to me that we should give to God first out of our income before we consider taxes. Since taxes are deductible and therefore individuals often receive refunds on taxes withheld is not the correct answer to tithe on our gross income instead of net. Well, you caught me on that one. Uh, Jim Baker used to be Secretary of the Treasury. I met with him and we were discussing this very matter. And he said that Ronald Reagan felt that you should be uh, uh, able to deduct 10% of your gross. And uh, Jim Baker said that's the law. and He's right. You can deduct up to 50% of your contributions to uh, certain uh, approved charities. And uh, indeed, it would be a tithe on your gross. And so perhaps I misspoke. But, uh, you know, you don't need to count your taxes. But the truth is you'll get the money back. But when you get the money back, you're supposed to tithe on that, right? Well, so. <laughs> not really. One, you, one time, you, you know, the thing of it is well, we're not under legalism. I mean, all this business about you, you got to be legalistic. You know, I, I, years ago, I, I set three tithes, as three tenths as a, as a thing, 30 percent as a, as a goal, and uh, the, the government allows you to give 50 percent. So, you know. Is that, isn't that biblical thing to give joyfully? I mean, to give with the right joyfully, heart. joyfully, but give tithes, offerings, and first fruits, and mm -hmm. so forth. So that they had at least four or five tithes in the Bible that when you get it all out there, there's a lot of giving, but they didn't have taxes that mm -hmm. they had to pay. All right. Yeah. Except, but some of them did. I want to, before you catch me <laughs> on that one, wait, wait a minute. Initially they didn't, then they started having taxes. Wait, that question's well, next week. Yeah, well, I, I want <laughs> just before I get yeah. another bunch of letters. Yeah. <laughs> Early on they didn't, later on they did. Okay. Okay, this is Saraceno who says, what happens to your spirit when you die if you're a Christian? Do you go to be present with the Lord, or does your spirit die until Jesus comes again? Well, there's some people teach so-called slow sleep. The Bible does not teach that. The Apostle Paul said, I'm in a straight betwixt two, whether to depart and be with the Lord, or to remain in the flesh, which is neatly two. Depart, 
be with the Lord, be with the Lord, remain in the flesh, needful for you. Not three, not four, not soul sleep, not purgatory, none of that stuff. You depart, and Jesus said to the thief on the cross, this day you will be with me in paradise. All right. Okay, I want to hear the answer to this one. Shane wants to know, what's the average amount of children that a Christian family should have? Oh, many. 127, uh, right? <laughs> the average number of children. <laughs> well, I had two boys and two girls. I've that got works. 14 grandchildren now. I'm going to have, uh, I think, uh, nine grand great grandchildren. Wow, that's so amazing. I, I think a uh, lots of them. You know, <laughs> lots of them. Uh, and enjoy it. <laughs> happy is the man whose quiver is full of them. So, all right. All but, the time for today. Yeah, but, there's no biblical standard for that one.